Hello everyone and welcome to another Out of the Cellar production. So today uh, I was just going to do a um, review of the kit that I took uh, when I did uh, an unsupported um, Land's End to Johnny Graves bike ride. Um, I was following the national cycle route and it was about 1200 miles long and uh, I'm just going to go through uh, the different uh, bags that I that I had um, and what I kept in those bags. Um, I, by, by the end of the trip I was completely self-sufficient so I was camping and I'll be able to uh, go through all of that different kit and sort of talk about the, the, the pros and cons and, and that might be useful if you were looking to do a trip like that yourself. Uh, so this was the bike that uh, I did the trip on. Uh, this is a, an Orbea Orca M30. In terms of the gearing that I had, um, I did put on an 1132 cassette at the back uh, and a long cage derailleur to, to accommodate the, the large gear at the back um, and then I had a compact uh, crank at the front uh, running Shimano 105 uh, throughout. Um, yeah I thought that the gearing that I had uh, was, was absolutely fine, I didn't feel like I was grinding too much. Um, there was issues with, with the limits I think going, going into the big ringers, uh, well into the big cog at the back after a while but um, I was actually fine in the, in the 28. Um, in terms of the storage on the bike I had the Altura Vortex seat pack which I have done a review on. Um, this was actually really really good, really waterproof. Um, there was heavy rain for a couple of days actually um, and everything in there stayed really dry. Um, what I actually quite liked about this was that you actually could uh, attach paracord um, to these sort of little um, uh, eyelets, uh, so I had a sort of spare tyre that I actually ended up using. Uh, also these straps here that you can adjust um, uh, were actually quite good for sort of hanging things off so I actually uh, added, um, well I had, my, I had my bike clock sort of looped around here uh, which was really handy. I also had a trowel as well um, on, on the other side too which was, which was, which was good. Um, I had a sort of bottle shaped storage uh, unit for um, mechanical tools so like tire levers, lube, um, a chain tool I think as well in there and um, patches uh, which, which is really handy. Um, I also had a, a camelback podium as well in here that isn't on at the moment. Um, <clears throat> And then at the front of the bike, um, I think the setup worked really well. Um, this is actually a saddle bag. Um, you can you can buy frame bags, um, you know, from from places like Apigura um, or sorry, bar, um, uh, Top Tube uh, sort of bags. Uh, they're quite expensive. But what I actually did was I got a I got a saddle bag, um, and I actually put a zip tie through the, the bottom, uh, which sort of secured it loosely to the to the top tube, uh, and then I actually use the velcro that would normally go around the seat post onto the the head tube um, and this actually works really well um, I've actually managed to keep quite a lot of stuff in here um, and then sort of going going to the front uh, under the handlebars uh, I've got the uh, Apigura uh, 9 litre bar bag uh, not a particularly good view but you'll see see um, a bit more of it later on so that that's the bag um, and um, it's actually got these really useful um, sort of eyelets with elasticated cord on it. So I managed to attach my tent uh, to that. Um, I did have to reinforce the attachment with some shoelaces, uh, but that, that, that seemed to work really well and I didn't have any issues with that. Um, and then finally had the, the Garmin uh, Edge 810. Lastly, I did have I did have a rucksack. Uh, I didn't find my, my back ache too much doing this, um, but no, this this was really good. I did take an Osprey um, bike cover, um, but yeah, everything everything worked really really well. And um, there's the dog. Uh, but I'll just I'll just go through what was in each of these bags uh, now. Right, so this is um, what was in the uh, Altura seat pack at the back of the bike. So. At the moment, we've got some got some boxes lashed to the top there. Um, as I said before, there was a tyre, um, but it's just, it's just a really handy feature. Uh, I've got some um, Perizumi arm warmers um, and some Castelli um, Nanoflex leg warmers. 
Um, I didn't actually use these at all, really, but they were sort of good to good to know that, that they were in there if the weather did get really, really cold. Um, I also had a um, Rab Silk Traveller sleeping bag liner. Um, this is actually, well, it, first of all, it was quite expensive because I, I bought it from Cotswold. Uh, it's about £60, I believe. Um, and it's, it's really thin, uh, but it does actually provide... Um, a little bit of warmth actually. Um, I, I sort of slept in my bag without it and then with it and I, you could definitely tell the difference. So uh, re re really good, it actually fit really well um, at the bottom of the bag there. Um, there was also some Adidas shorts that I wore when I was sort of just camping uh, just for a bit of warmth. Uh, I had a uh, Summit Xbed uh, inflatable roll mat. Uh, this is actually really, really compact and the fact that you blow air into it um, uh, means that it's quite insulated. Um, I think it's more insulating than say sort of a foam one um, and some spare tent pegs and a trusty trowel which I, I did actually use quite frequently um, and yeah finally a uh, first aid kit uh, which was fortunately not required but it's always always good to take especially if you're in a rural place uh, on the seat pack as well, I also had attached through this little hole here uh, a cat eye rear light, um, which was actually uh, quite good because um, when you slowed down, um, it got brighter, um, which is quite good from a safety point of view. This, uh, well, these were the things that I kept in my uh, saddle bag, which was on the uh, the top tube. Uh, so I had some uh, sun cream. Um, I felt like the, the weather, certainly in the first five days, was quite hot, even in sort of May. Uh, so uh, I, did, I did get a bit sunburnt, so that's always good to have uh, in a travel size. Um, I also had some uh, Nivea lip balm as well. Um, when, when there's a lot of wind and sun, um, my lips can get a bit dry, so that might be handy if you were to, to do any sort of long distance touring. Pretty, pretty, pretty small. Um, the trusty Swiss Army knife camping, um, really good actually. It's got a, a knife, a bottle opener, a tin opener, and a cork opener. So I use most of these functions as well. Uh, they've also got um, like a toothpick and tweezers as well. Uh, I lost the tweezers, but uh, that was that was good. Uh, had some uh, antihistamine. Uh, I did uh, have a pretty bad reaction to a horse, <laughs> so it's good to have some of them. Um, a chain tool as well, um, and some and two uh, SAS uh, caffeine gels, just in the case that I uh, really, well, quite badly bonked, and I needed some um, stuff to get me to get me to the nearest uh, campsite or shop, or whatever. Okay, so here we have the majority of the items that were held in the Mountain Warehouse uh, rucksack. Uh, some 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 of this uh, stuff was in my jersey pockets, but um, most of it was in there. So we have to start with the North Face High Vent Waterproof Jacket. This is really good in sort of um, sort of medium to heavy rain. Uh, however, when it does rain heavily for a long period of time, it does start to well the waterproofness uh, does start to sort of break down uh, after after a while. But it does dry rather quickly. Uh, we've got the Oddballs beanie. Um, this was used when I was camping. Uh, it was quite chilly at times, so I mean, that was Kent. good. Um, a North Face uh, sort of base layer. Um, I this was kind of what I used to wear when I wasn't cycling. However, when it was cold, I used to put it on uh, as well. Uh, thin fleece, a mountain hardware fleece. Uh, this has done its time. Um, Pretty worn actually. It's actually ripped by the collar, but that that that's that's done really well. Uh, a small-ish towel. You can get smaller travel towels. Uh, ideally, I should have taken one, but this was just good, just to um, kind of wash. Uh, sort of, if I, if I wash my face in the morning, it in like a river or something, I can like dry it with that. We've got the Camelback bladder, two liters. Uh, really good. This slotted uh, slotted in really well into the rucksack. Um, and it was also handy to carry water used what well, needed for um, camping. So I had this bladder with the the uh, sort of a, a sort of six seven hundred milliliter 
uh, water bottle and that was perfect so less than three liters is fine uh, got a really good power bank battery uh, this was a, a friend lent it to me um, you probably get like six or seven charges for your phone with this so I use this to charge my Garmin my phone and my camera uh, so that was handy this was the lock that was attached to the seat pack um, so good for popping into the shops if you're in a sort of busy place um, got headphones if I wanted to listen to music I didn't really listen to music that much because um, I was just kind of enjoying just pedaling away um, without it really uh, got a charge for my Garmin and my phone pump this got this got this is actually seized because it's got loads of water in it uh, it might have actually improved since but that wasn't ideal um, a pen for writing I, I did like a journal uh, so that was that was good uh, spare in a tube, I did use a few of these actually. Uh, lighter for my stove, which I'll talk about later on. Um, which is good. Bontrager iron light, good as always, uh, except the the mount's actually broken, it's snapped, so I might have to get a new one. Um, uh, sponge for washing up my stove. Electrolyte tabs, these are really handy. I'd recommend that anyone that is doing long distance stuff uh, uses has at least one of these a day, uh, one of these sort of little tabs. Um, just to make sure you're getting your salts because you don't want to get too dehydrated. Um, pedal spanner, didn't need to use this, uh, but I was running SPDs, which I do rate. Tick remover. Again, fortunately, didn't need to use this. Um, so I could have I could have potentially been even more lightweight really, um, but if you're in the Highlands of Scotland, you may need to use this for obvious reasons. Um, Savlon, I uh, thought if I maybe got a cut or a really bad saddle sore, I might use some of that, uh, but I didn't need to use it fortunately. Uh, Sudacreme, um, didn't use this either actually, um, but I did get some saddle sores about halfway through, uh, but they sort of Sort them, sort themselves out. This stuff, uh, it's really expensive actually, smidge. £7.19. Uh, but this is uh, really good if you're in, say, near a river in Scotland, because there were a lot of midges out there. Uh, but what I did found was that if if you just got into your tent and shut all the zips, it's, it's all good. Spoon, a teaspoon for eating with. Uh, I did have a spork, which was better, but I snapped it. Uh, I've got a buff, this is really recommend taking buffs um, because they just keep your face warm when you're in the wind and the rain. What I've got here, yeah, notepad. So yeah, I said I did a journal. C kind of old fashioned, um, but it just means that you can read through these when you're older and you, the things you write down will spur other memories. Um, I would be. I am surprised as to how little you actually retain of the things you do. Um, so that's good. And this was the the trusty Land End John O'Groats Cycling Network book, which was complete with um, maps and beverages of the area and interesting facts about the places you were you're going through. So really recommend getting that book if you want to do the route. Toilet roll, um, tea bag. Um, get getting a getting a getting a brew when you finish is always is always good or in the mornings. Head torch as well. This was used a lot actually, um, but in Scotland in the summer, it's, it's probably only dark for like four or five hours a day, especially on the north coast. After sun, if you're disorganised and you get burnt, which is what happened to me. Um, and then toothbrush and toothpaste, and finally a wallet. Only needed a debit card and ID. And finally, a uh, Osprey rucksack liner. So, this was all the stuff that I had in my rucksack. I did wear some of this while cycling, but I will get onto the kit that I took as well, whilst, which I wore. So, this uh, is the Apogura 9 litre bar bag, uh, which is the smaller version, um, which was attached at the front of my bike between the handlebars. Um, I didn't use this to full capacity because of the constraints of the width of the handlebars. I know you can get sort of um, splayed or f uh, flayed um, um, handlebars which mean that you can actually have a 
uh, greater amount of storage capabilities for a road bike. If you're on a mountain bike, this is really good because the, the handlebars don't uh, restrict how wide this can be. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking to bike pack with a mountain bike, this is this is good. I did feel like the material um, was quite thin, and that in heavy rain, I did feel like maybe slight, uh, uh, yeah, some water may have slightly got inside. Um, but then again, it's hard to know if, if it was actually the the material, or whether it was to do with um, the rolling closure mechanism. So jury's out on that one still. Um, but in this bag, I kept my stove, uh, which is a jet boil. Um, I rate this product. Um, I, I might do a, a sort of more in-depth review on this, but essentially, you can keep the um, the gas, the stove, the actual like where the gas comes out of, uh, and the sort of um, stand for it. All of this can be held inside inside here. Bit manky in there, but we'll just uh, ignore that. But yeah, kept my jet boil in there, and then I had a Berghaus uh, Expedition 200 sleeping bag. This is a down sleeping bag. Um, I originally had a sort of a synthetic one, which was um, comfortable from, from nine degrees. Uh, limit was five. This was slightly warmer which did make a difference, uh, but I did find myself being slightly cold, uh, especially when there was a breeze uh, where, where, where I was camping uh, on the north coast. It was certainly, uh, I was certainly chilly in this, even with sort of three or four layers on. Um, but having said that, it is a, a light, compact bit of kit, which um, isn't really, really thin. It, 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 can, it can, be, can be good it, when, the, when the conditions are right. Okay, and here is the tent that was attached to the Apertura bar bag. It's an OEX uh, Evolution tent. It's basically a one-man tunnel tent, which is really compact. I mean, I'm trying to get this down as much as I can, but I mean, that's the size of my hand. So it's like two hand lengths um, wide, and it can fit between my handlebars, which was perfect. It's also really light as well. Um, really like this. Um, the the only sort of issues is that if you say want to um, move your stuff around within the tent, it is really hard because um, of just how low you are. Um, you know, it's a tunnel tent, so obviously you you are low to the ground, and and, and the the inner hangs very very low over you. Um, I did originally have a bivy bag and a tarp, um, but this was so much better. I I, I mean. The idea of maybe bivying uh, might appeal to some people, but um, I've yet to have a, a really good uh, night's sleep. I felt like this was certainly warmer, and it was good to basically remove yourself from from the elements, so um, from the, from from the wind and rain, and also from midges. Um, that certainly wouldn't. Well, if you had a tarp and a bivy, uh, you may still have exposure to those elements, which may or may not be good for for yourself. Um, but yeah, this was, this was really good uh, and I certainly rate that. Okay, and here we have the the sort of uh, pro container that fits in uh, my rear bottle cage. Um, this was good uh, just because I didn't need to carry it on my, on my, on my back. Um, but yeah, I kept in this uh, some, as well, a small thing of uh, dry lube uh, some glue for patches, uh, some patches, a multi-tool. Uh, what I would say about this is I would recommend that you have a sort of polythene bag to keep stuff in because if you look at this multi-tool it is quite rusty. So uh, just bear that in mind. Uh, yeah, got sort of a, a, a coarse sander thing to, to, to rub down on the tyres when you replace flat. Got some um, Cycling Plus tyre levers, these are great, nice wide hook on them. Um, and some washing up liquid. And then finally, yeah, I wore these Castelli gloves. They did not cost um, one pound, I don't know how that's got on there. Uh, they cost 30. Uh, but yeah, really good. These have actually worn down quite a bit. The, the, the sort of gel has um, 
worn down. But they were comfy. They were comfy. Uh, they cost thirty pounds, and I quite like the look of them. All right. Finally, we've got the stuff that I wore most of the time. Um, during the 17 days that I was riding, I only actually took one pair of shorts, but I did wash wash these uh, sort of three or four times along the way. Uh, these are just Castelli uh, bib shorts, um, really nice chamois, um, and yeah, they, they, they did a good job. Um, in addition to that, I also had some Adidas sort of three quarter length tights. Um, originally, I wasn't planning to actually wear these riding, but I did find that um, they were really good to keep my knees warm. Um, I felt like when you're doing a lot of miles, you can um, get sore knees. Um, and these these certainly helped help helped in that regard. Uh, again, just another synthetic uh, warmer uh, for my torso, which was which was all fine. And a jersey with uh, big pockets. I'd I'd recommend uh, taking your jersey with your biggest pockets because uh, you're always going to stash stuff in there. Because um, if you you know if you're if you're bike packing, um, you you know maybe running low on storage. So stuffing stuffing things in your jersey pockets will will always help that. Um, anything else? Oh yeah. Also, uh, took these Shimano shoes as well. Uh, run SBDs. Really recommend SBDs. Uh, these are probably half a size too big for me uh, because um, uh, well, they're not they're not mine. I, I borrowed them. Uh, but I feel like if you're doing a lot of miles, um, having slightly big shoes is way more comfy. Um, sometimes you can get numb feet, but I didn't really get that with these. So. Um, yeah, recommend SPD, uh, comfy, slightly big shoes, really good. And uh, yeah, that is that is it basically. But thank you very much for watching, and take care. Hopefully, this has inspired you to do your own um, bike travel. So thank you. Bye.